held a moment of silence on the floor for the victims of the San Bernardino shooting just three days after the third anniversary of Newtown. And while we should always pay tribute to those who lost their lives from senseless gun violence, the best way to honor their lives is for Congress to take action that will protect others from becoming victims of the same kind of violence. And today we're doing that by introducing the assault weapons ban of 2015. This legislation will prohibit the sale, transfer, production, and importation of new military-style assault weapons and high-capacity magazines that have become the firearm of choice of many mass shooters in the United States. Now let's remember that assault weapons were first designed for the battlefield by Germans during the Second World War. The sole purpose of their existence was to kill as many people as quickly as possible during military combat. Last month, assault weapons were used in San Bernardino, California, by terrorists intent on killing Americans. A few days before that, they were used at Planned Parenthood in Colorado Springs. Assault weapons were used during mass shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School, a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, and a community college in Roseburg, Oregon. And all of them were obtained legally. Since 2011, the frequency of mass shootings has increased by about a factor of three. And more than half of all mass shooters who killed four or more people over the last three decades used an assault weapon or high-capacity magazine. Both are the focus of this legislation. When an assault weapon or high-capacity magazine is used in a shooting, the number of victims who are killed increases by 63%. We have a gun violence epidemic in this country. There have been almost 50,000 incidents of gun violence this year. More than 12,000 Americans have lost their lives, and more than 3,000 children have been killed or injured. And we are not powerless in the face of this. We have the ability and the responsibility to do all that we can to stop this violence. And the first step we can take to reduce the toll of gun violence is to make it harder for weapons of war to end up in our communities. The assault weapons ban of 2015 will prohibit the sale, transfer, production, or importation of semi-automatic rifles and handguns with military-style features that can accept a detachable magazine, semi-automatic rifles and handguns with a fixed magazine that can hold more than 10 rounds, semi-automatic shotguns with a military-style feature, and any ammunition feeding device that can hold more than 10 rounds, and 157 specifically named and listed firearms. In addition, this bill will also close the Charleston loophole, which is the practice that allows a gun dealer to complete a sale if a background check is not completed within three days. From 2010 to 2014, more than 15,000 gun sales were completed to prohibited individuals, such as convicted felons, domestic abusers, and drug abusers. These sales were allowed to go through because the buyer's background check was not completed within three days. I've never understood why this was allowed to happen. It's a senseless policy. And we need to make sure that at the very least, assault weapons that are already in the country not be sold or transferred to someone who is by law prohibited from possessing a firearm. So this bill extends the period for law enforcement to complete the background <coughs> check from three days to 14 days. And if it's determined after that period that an individual procured a gun illegally, then the FBI will be required to notify federal, state, and local law enforcement so they can retrieve the gun as quickly as possible and hold that individual fully accountable for breaking the law. This issue is too important for Congress to do nothing. And I want to point out that we've heard a lot in this town about the powerful special interests that are blocking progress on gun violence prevention legislation. But the fact is that Washington, D.C. is filled with powerful special interests. And every single day, members of Congress are expected to make decisions that are in the best interests of the American people, even in the face of powerful special interests. And as I said, this is one part of addressing the problem of gun violence in our country. We need a comprehensive solution that ends the ban on gun violence research, fixes our broken background check system, prohibits individuals on a terrorist watch list from buying a gun, and keeps guns out of the hands of individuals with serious mental illness such that possession of a gun would pose a danger to that individual or others. It's Congress's responsibility to stop this ongoing bloodshed. But last week, Republicans repeatedly blocked a bill that would ban people on the terrorist watch list from buying a gun. And today we learned that they're going to continue banning simple research on the causes of gun violence. Now, I'm sure that opponents of the assault weapons ban will claim that this won't make a difference, that it won't stop the killing that happens every single day in this country. Let them tell that to the mothers and fathers who lost children at Newtown. Let them tell that to the husbands and wives who lost loved ones in San Bernardino. We have let this issue go unaddressed for far too long. And we can't correct the failure of past Congresses to act, but we can demand that this moment be different. It's time for members of Congress to be held accountable for where they stand on this important issue. 
just months before Senator Robert F. Kennedy was killed by an assassin's bullet, he said, past error is no excuse for its own perpetuation. Tragedy is a tool for the living to gain wisdom, not a guide by which we live. There has been too much tragedy in this country because of gun violence, and we cannot allow it to become a standard of American life. This bill is one step toward restoring some measure of sanity to the way we treat guns in this country. And I'm really grateful to many of my colleagues who are here today, and 120 who have joined this bill as original co-sponsors. And I'd like to begin with our distinguished leader who has uh, been a tremendous voice on responsible gun safety legislation and a great advocate uh, for so many of these efforts, Whip Hoyer. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> and I say Mr. Mayor because he was the mayor of a city, <coughs> and he saw firsthand, on, unfortunately, too frequent a basis, of what assault weapons can do. Uh, the Second Amendment, the Supreme Court has said, ensures the right of an American to own a gun. Machine guns, however, are outlawed in America, one, because they can kill a lot of people very quickly. That's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, I don't know any hunters uh, that use assault weapons. Uh, and if they do, that's not much of a sport. I understand people want to protect themselves and their homes. But what we have here is uh, a reasonable uh, restraint to protect our people. Uh, in the cities or where am I staying? The rural areas. So I'm glad to join Mr. Cicilline and my colleagues who are standing here. Since the assault weapon ban lapsed in 2004, we had an assault weapon ban. It was in place. And very frankly, I didn't get anybody calling me up and saying, this is abridging my Second Amendment rights. Uh, we've seen since the assault ban lapsed thousands of mass shootings across the country many of which the perpetrators used dangerous assault weapons that were legally purchased. In San Bernardino, of course, the two shooters were armed with high-powered, high-capacity assault rifles that were legally purchased by a third party. A deranged young man who massacred innocent children in Newtown three years ago also used an assault weapon. In Colorado, in Oregon, and in other mass shootings, assault weapons were used to inflict very quickly death and carnage on innocent people. Congress must take action to prevent uh, this tragic, too frequent loss of life. I want to thank Representative Cicilline for leading us, and I want to thank each and every one of my colleagues who are here. Uh, some of them from Connecticut, Colorado, or other places, uh, Chicago, uh, Baltimore my own city and my state. I want to thank all of my colleagues for making a strong stand for every one of America's children, every one of America's parents, every one of American citizens. Thank you, David Cicilline. Thank you, my colleagues.